Shooter ready? Ready. Stand by. Engage. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. In three, two, one. Hey everybody, it's Eric and... And Roy. And thanks for checking out another Hatchet Cast episode. And today we're going to be talking about Mills versus MOA. What's the difference? Is one better than the other? Uh, how does that fit into me growing as a shooter? But first, before we get started, uh, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. It really does help us out. As well as comment what kind of uh, measurement do you use? Do you use Mills or do you use MOA? And then what are some of the lessons learned that you had using that type of measurement for your dope for, for longer range shooting? Um, let's disclaimer it up. All right, so right now, guys, we're moving our studio around. So understand that this is not the best scenario. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't represent our abilities. <laughs> I also forgot the DJ mic, so yeah, we're running so a... We're running on a $20 Amazon mic, so <laughs> yeah. we, will, we will make do. Yeah, so anyways, let's just get to the meat and potatoes of it. Um, so Mills versus MOA, it's one of the questions that we get a lot. I mm -hmm. think one of the comments that we have all the time on our videos or in class is hey I run Mills or I run MOA or which one's better? Um, you know I have a I have a BDC reticle, but it's an MOA adjustment. What does that mean? My dot adjustment in MOA. Um, what's this Miller radian thing? So I guess the biggest thing is like first, what, what do we use? So let's 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 just before we even ask the question. Okay? Yeah. Uh, if you're looking for an optic, um, one you should be making sure immediately if you're if you're using a MOA optic your turrets should match your reticle. Mm. Okay. So for example, if you're saying if you have an MOA optic and Correct. you're in mills. Exactly. So you if you have, have a MOA turrets, mm -hmm. okay, what you adjust off of, if you have a, let's just say your MOA uh, turrets adjusting quarter MOA, right, and then you have a mill reticle, those, we're, we're at the point in time, I know, you know, there was a lot of guys that were issued that at one point in time, uh, running, running like the old little pole scopes, like right. the Mark 4s and stuff like that, uh, that had, you know, MOA turrets with, a mill radical so you're having to do a lot of math as far as converting stuff okay? right and that's very difficult to do it can be done but it takes entire lessons of sitting through school mm. to, to learn how to do it properly uh, or using calculators all right so your your reticle should match your turrets okay right. as far as first first off if you're looking for a new scope do not buy something where the two do not talk back and forth with each other where they're not the same thing yeah, so okay. something to check out for. for. For sure. And then when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, what you choose to shoot, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Hmm. All it is is an angle of measurement. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one is measuring and typically quarter-inch adjustments, and the other one's measuring and tenths of adjustment. Okay? Yeah. Um, so it really doesn't matter what you choose. We choose MRAD or MILS, whichever way you want to word it, um, primarily because most of the individuals that we shoot around, that's what they shoot also. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so when we're talking amongst each other, when we have shooter talk back and forth, spotter to shooter talk, um, we're talking the same language. One of us is not speaking Spanish and the other speaking English. Yeah. So, so for example, if our group shot mostly MOA, we'd be shooting MOA. We'd be shooting MOA. Yeah. Yep. Um, one of the other big reasons why I, I moved towards MRAD or MILS was um, a lot of times based on, uh, let's just use it as far as an example. Okay. Um, let's just say my. 300 yard hold okay my 300 yard hold for me and like shooting something like a 14.5 with mark 262 77 grain or black hills or something like that is typically roughly right about one mil mm. okay 1.1 mil uh that tenth of a mil really isn't going to make that big of a difference on the target sizes generally speaking that right. we're engaging okay 
that even being said, if that tenth of a mil needed to be done um, with an MRAD reticle, okay, a mil reticle or mil turrets, I can actually dial that tenth. Okay, right. so I can dial 1.1. One. Okay, if I was 1.1 1. 1 MOA, okay, or in this particular situation for 300 yards, I would be 3.8 MOA. Mm. I can't dial 0. 0.8 MOA. Okay, because right. if you think about your MOA adjustments, uh, typically for the most part they're quarter MOA. Right. Okay, so I can't dial 3.8. So I either got to round down, I got to dial three and a half, or I got to dial four. Does that make sense? And then split the difference. And split the difference, yeah. okay? Uh, now, if I'm holding, most likely I'm probably just going to hold four MOA. Right. All right. The other reason why, uh, outside of that, um, mill being the way that mill measures, okay, so one entire mill is 3.6 inches at 100 yards. Okay, so if you take 3.6 inches at 100 yards, and then that's measured down in a tenth, so one tenth would be 0. 0.36, okay? Correct. Right. Same thing with uh, as far as uh, MOA. MOA, typically one MOA, what most people say one MOA is, is one inch at 100 yards. Yeah. Technically, it's actually 1.04 inches is what mm -hmm. it actually equals out to. Um, and that becomes a little bit of a problem in its own the further that you start to stretch out. Right. Okay. Because a lot of times people are not taking that into consideration. So you're adding that additional. So they're saying one inch at 100 yards, two inches at 200 yards, three inches at 300 yards. Okay. If all this makes sense. I don't want to get too complicated in all the math. Okay. I'm really good at math. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just kidding. The 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 other reason why I choose um, and have have went the direction of shooting mills is um, going into a lot of times it's less numbers for me to physically remember. Okay. I know that my dope on that Mark 262 out of 14.5 rifle um, or you know 62 grain or something very similar to that uh, at 300 yards is one mil at 400 yards it's two mil at 500 yards it's three mils. Mm. Those. That, that's really easy. One, yeah. two, three, right? Yeah. That's an easy number to remember. Uh, we get into MOA, 3.8, 7 mils, 10.7. Mm. Those are harder numbers for me to actually physically remember on the fly. Does yeah. that make sense? Okay. Yeah. And then as we start to stretch even further than that, let's just say, for instance, I'm engaging a target at 700 yards and then maybe back in 400 yards. And well, at 700 yards in an MOA, that same dial for 700 yards where I would be right at six mils, 5.9, six mils, I would be 20.2 MOA. So there's just more numbers that I have to remember in MOA. Because mm. just, just yes, it is a finer measurement, MOA is, because it goes all the way down into quarters. Um, but there's a lot more for me to think about. There's mm. a lot more for me to remember. So yeah. that's my other reason why I choose MRAD. Um, it's it physically is simple for me to remember what my holds are. Yeah. I remember what my dope is. And I think also like, you I'm know, sure there's... that was complicating. No, I mean, that makes <laughs> Hopefully sense. Hopefully it came out the correct way. Yeah, just watch this video four times and it won't be complicated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so, yeah. What's this guy rambling about? <laughs> <laughs> All these numbers that he went back and forth with. <laughs> I'm probably going to watch this video and rewatch this five times. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing I know for me is... Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that have shot MOA in the military because the MOA was a unit of measurement used mm -hmm. primarily by snipers and marksmen in the military. So guys, um, I know for me, when I was looking at MOA initially, I was like, there's a lot of history on mm -hmm. MOA. So um, maybe I'll start diving into that. But for guys in the military who did this as a, as a profession, you had to learn MOA. Well, you had to learn it. And now it's easy because you've mastered it. Yeah. But um, milliradian in mills or, or, or uh, milliradians, just was an easier concept for me to understand. And also, um, when I was learning, you know, long distance shooting, mostly it was from you, mm -hmm. you know, you were kind of already had that platform of mills. Yeah. So being able to understand that and then shooting with you as a shooting partner, yeah. I was able to grasp the concept quickly. So um, to me, it's just, you know, milliradians and MOA, it's just like a unit of measurement. It's just like inches versus, you know, centimeters. Um, it's totally dependent on what you want to run. So asking the question, I'm, I'm at a BDC reticle, right? Um, so why would I choose mill or why would I choose MOA? Why, what, what, what would be the difference? Okay, so for me, my community, um, why go to one of these overshooting a BDC, right? Mm. Okay, that's one of the questions that we go quite often. So we've already established my community is shooting in mills. So that's what I'm going to stick with. Um, so we're all talking the exact same thing. BDC reticles are awesome. They really are, okay? You got a 14.5 rifle out there and you're shooting 62 grain and you want to pick up an ACOG, it's going to match almost perfect, Yeah. right? Generally speaking, uh, you got a Colt 6920 or whatever it may be, that BDC, as long as you zero it to what they say 
okay, uh, the manufacturer does, or if you've got a primary arms and you're zeroing it to what primary arms says that that BDC matches up with, and the bullet and the ballistics of the bullet and everything, then it's fantastic. It's really, really simple. That was the entire point behind it, right? Yeah. Find the it's distance like, and then hold the, hold the number on the Zero distance. this at, at, a, at 100 meters. Mm-hmm with 62 grain and you're going to have, you know, you're going to have this perfect hold basically all the way at, find the numbers, five means five, four means four, three means three, yeah. right? Really, yeah. really simple to understand. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to think about anything else. Keep it simple, stupid. Yep, yeah, exactly. As we move into, you know, rifles like we got back here on the back where we have several different types of barrel links, mm. rifles that are designated to shoot certain types of calibers, meaning, okay, well, you know, um, a typical general everyday purpose type rifle, most likely I'm probably going to shoot whatever it is that I stock up. Right. And a lot of times that's probably going to be what? 55 grain, right? 55 or 62. 55 or 62. Yeah. Um, and not everyone is stocking up on, you know, 77 grain. Right. Ideally, if you can afford it, go ahead and do so because it is a better bullet. Yeah. Right. Um, but not everyone is, is, is gathering their ammo together and, and they're specifically designated to only 55 or only 62 uh, or only 77 most guys even including myself like i have i have so many thousand rounds of 55 and i have so many thousand rounds of 62 and i even have so many thousand rounds of 77 mm -hmm. so i got a lot of different ammos and that's what a mill reticle allows me to do mm -hmm. i can literally create my own bdc or a moa reticle allows me to create my own bdc within that i can create my own dope and know I can write that down. I can gather that data. I can, I can, you know, as far as I've been shooting mills long enough out of a 5.56 rifle now, I can, you know, I can remember mm -hmm. exactly what it is. Um, but it allows me to create my own, my own BDC for the most part. Yeah. My own BDC reticle. So that's why I say choose going this direction. I feel like um, more and more manufacturers should start moving towards, and we're actually seeing it. Primary Arms came out with their 5X Prism. That has a mill reticle in it. Mm. Uh, I think that uh, you're seeing the military move more towards a mill reticle. Um, we've talked about that in the VCOG video. Yeah. Now a lot of a lot of the agencies and departments or DOD or military that are that are doing this, they're not necessarily always using their mill reticle for you know for ranging. Um, it just allows them to basically once again to create their own dope. Yeah. Um, without having to rely on that BDC inset bullet. I, the, I can mix it up. The other cool thing that I know that, you know, you and I first did when we started shooting a lot together, especially a lot of distance, um, is despite what caliber, you know, say if Roy's running a 308 and I'm running a 556 gun yeah, and we're somewhere. both using mills, I can give him a measurement, you know, like, hey, you know, hold 0.5 mils or I can give him, hey, here's here's your elevation or whatever it is. I can measure things out in mills. And despite calibers, we can speak the same language. You can do that with MOA, mm -hmm. you can do that with mills. So the fact that it kind of goes back to the original point of making sure that you're shooting the same type of measurement within your group, you yeah. know, so that way it's not like, uh, you know, hey, give me an MOA. I'm trying to give him an MOA correction or measurement, mm -hmm. and I'm shooting mills. So yeah. it's just more fluid. Uh, it's more. Um, you actually have, capable. yeah, you have a unit of measurement. Yeah. So versus, uh, you know, talking, you know, body size. You know, hey, you you're, you're an entire torso. Mm -hmm. You know, um, from left to right, you need to hold a whole, whole, you know body size or whatever, right. whatever, whatever it is. Okay, um, you're whatever unit of measurement that you're using based off of the object that you're shooting at, yeah. at that particular point in time. Now I can actually say, hey, Eric, you have, you know, 0.5 mils, you know, you need to hold from left to right 0.2, yeah. you know, um, we can get, we can get a lot finer with mm -hmm. that. So, yeah. and more precise. Yeah, I know. Uh, in, in speaking to the fact that the there's a lot of agencies and departments that are also changing to that. I know for for my side of the house, as far as the uh, military side, there's guys that are changing. You know, running night force attackers, and that's a mill reticle. Running a, uh, um, uh, you know, their their long distance glass, the VCOG with the Marines. They're mm -hmm. running a mill reticle. So you're starting to see a lot more entities running mill um, because it is able. One, I think it's easier to understand yep. uh, for the common person that hasn't had any. Uh, experience really in long range shooting. So now you're making them capable and making them more precise and also being able to describe and give you target measurements, stuff like that. Tons of capability that you have in that. Um, I think the other thing that was really kind of a natural progression going from BDC as well is whenever, like when I started off shooting BDCs, ACOGs, you shot it off ACOGs, mm -hmm. you know, like on our, on our uh, for his, your AR rifle taking training and all that yeah. stuff for me on my M4 deployed, stuff like that, even my, um, uh, was it Elkan? Yeah. So running a BDC and it was just super simple. Mm -hmm. As 
as we started shooting a lot more and becoming more putting a, being a marksman more or our rifleman skills a lot more higher priority that's when i feel like i was like i want more information mm -hmm. you know so one of the things that we always hear especially in the comments is like that reticle is too busy yeah and it's like now i'm starting to see okay that reticle is no longer seeming busy to me it seems like it's very capable of giving me yeah. a lot of information there's there comes a point in time in your shooting journey okay so we always talk about that you can't buy performance mm -hmm. okay uh, what you can buy is you can buy equipment that complements your abilities that you've earned as a shooter. Right. Okay, uh, you earn those abilities as a shooter by putting the time in behind behind the system, whatever it is that you choose. Once you've earned that, you've leveled up. Like this has now become you know um, become where I'm at. I am I'm at I'm here. So I can I can find something new in my journey that's going to complement me, mm. give me more data, give me more information. And I think that's what a you know an MOA reticle or a mill reticle has that ability to do. Um, now I know BDC reticles are starting to get a little bit more complex now where they do have some wind holds in them and things like that. And you have units of measurements based on, you know, five foot nine, five foot 10 height, you know, individual. Right. So BDC reticles are becoming more advanced. Uh, thank you, Primary Arms. You've done, you know, done a fantastic mm -hmm. developing better quality BDC reticles. Yeah. Okay. Um, but still, at the end of the day, um, a, a mill or a or a, even an MOA reticle is going to give you more. Yeah. Like they're they're just they're just physically is more. And most guys are intimidated. They see that and they're like, oh man, this that's a super busy reticle. Like like it's going to clog up my my ability to identify and see my targets and stuff like that. No, it doesn't. Like. It just... I mean, the one thing you can do is. If you want to learn about mill radicals, come to a scope carbon class. And that's what we talk about in our scope carbon. We're always pushing training and we're always talking about our training. It's a great way to support us. Yeah. Um, but that is where you learn. And that's the type of thing where it's like, if you learn, want to learn mills, yes, you can do YouTube videos and stuff like that. But sometimes you just got to go out and shoot it or just attend a class and get that hands-on knowledge uh, about how to utilize that. And once you get that class, now you have the tools to be able to perfect your skills and train and you have somewhere to start off yeah. at. It's not as difficult as what most people, most no. people make it out to be. I mean, um, I figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you are Asian. Yeah, I'm, I'm the worst Asian. I'm literally terrible uh, at that. <laughs> and I drive really well. <laughs> <laughs> like a 72 year old grandma yeah i draw very slow <laughs> very, very yeah slow. i'm not no tokyo drifting oh man i could i can travel to the ranch and yeah. back while you're still dude i, <laughs> I do a tokyo ranch. slow hand turn <laughs> yeah, exactly uh it's really not that complicated yeah. and it's it is relatively very simple um i think i think people look too deep into this mm -hmm. um i think people spend more time a lot of times researching this stuff than actually physically getting out and putting the time right. behind it. Uh, I think if you want to, you feel like you're in this point in time in your journey where, okay, well, I'm doing really, really good with this BDC reticle, um, and let, let me let me try something new to see if it'll enhance my, uh, if it will complement my abilities and help me take another step to another level, uh, then you should definitely jump into something like a mill reticle, mm -hmm. all right? Um, training is where it's at, yeah. getting time behind the rifle. You can you can research this to no end. You yeah. Can, but until you actually get out there and get behind the rifle and start looking at targets at distance and putting rounds down range, um, you know, you're never gonna figure it out. It's also exciting. Like it was super exciting for me to start learning, going from just pistol and rifle, you know, carbine close up shooting to now like stretching things out. Yeah. It's exciting because it's like one, I'm increasing our, my capability, but two, it's new knowledge. It's exciting to learn some new stuff. And the other thing is you start to grow. Uh, as a rifleman and it just broadens your spectrum of what you can do and make you well-rounded which as it, as you guys all know in the brown hatchet community we always preach mm -hmm. to be well-rounded shooters so um the one thing what is something that now that we are using mill reticles what are some good characteristics and qualities of a mill reticle when we're looking at an optic what are some things that stick out to us that we want to look at? so one of the things that i want um is a uh as i increase my magnification my my center point of aim okay uh the, the crosshairs the stadia the the little dot in the center however the reticle is designed i want it to be a very fine aiming point right i don't want uh when we're talking most of the time we're shooting front focal plane optics when we're talking about shooting mill reticles uh and that's very important when you have a reticle that you can range with to have a front fo focal plane optic and we can dive deeper into that a whole nother video um or guys jump out there on youtube there's plenty of videos explaining why go front focal plane mm -hmm. over so second focal plane um so we obviously want to we have established we want a front focal plane optic mm -hmm. if we're shooting mill um 
the only exception to that would be, as I would say, is if you have something like a low power variable, maybe like a, like a one to six or something like that, where yeah. you're probably only going to use one and you're probably only going to use, use six. six. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but as we increase that magnification, we're talking in optics as we have like, uh, you know, one to eights or two to tens or three to fifteens or three to eighteens or four and a half to twenty seven. Yeah. I mean, okay. there's even a one to twelve, I think, if I had a ball. Exactly. So, oh, right. so we obviously want that front focal plane, especially when we have that mill reticle. So we mm -hmm. keep everything true all the way through. All right. Um, so I want that fine aiming point. As I increase my magnification, where the where that's not too where it's not too thick, okay, right. where it's covering up entire targets. The other thing is I want is as I come down that line down that stadia, uh, is I want some numbers in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't have to have one, two, three, four all the way down. Uh, we can we can you know we can go two, four, six, as far as okay, two mils, four mils, six mils, eight mils, ten mils, twelve mils within my reticle, but I want some type of number in there. Mm -hmm. To, to so I can I can be behind my glass and I can easily just look for that that line and I can either count up or count down from my from my from my largest number or my smallest number right. okay uh, where I can find that in between and then from there I want something that gives me a Christmas tree style reticle where we come down okay um, and and give me some wind holds. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, if we're talking about these types of rifles that we're that we're shooting, we're shooting fighting rifles. If I have the time to dial, I'm going to dial. Yeah. Okay. Because I can get a more precise aiming point. But uh, if if I don't have the time to dial and I'm trying to engage multiple targets, then uh, I'm probably going to need I'm probably going to need some some wind holds in there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's very important. There's a lot of great reticles that are out there now. You can get uh, you can get into some very advanced reticles where they're breaking down your wind holds and you know in tenths or two tenths mm. uh, versus a lot of them are probably going to break it down in half mil. Yeah. Uh, which is fine enough for this type of rifle, you yeah. know, for, for a fighting rifle. You know, I think also the wind holes that a lot of people don't account for is also just movers in general. Like yes, you have correct. boom, so you may have no wind, but you have a mover that's running from one mil, one and a half mil, two mils, three and a half mils, and they're booking it, and you have to be able to track that. So some, having some sort of reference point in your wind holds is important. I think the one other thing that I also look for in a reticle is if there's going to be a complicated Christmas tree, there needs to be numbers to complement that. Correct. Meaning if mm -hmm. I have a buttload of wind hold dots and I've got every five mils or 10 mils it's labeled, mm -hmm. I have to count all these dots down with no frame of reference uh, from that large number. And now if I make that first shot, cool. But if I miss and I need to make a follow on shot or I need to do a couple more shots or different movers, now I have to count all the way down and do that under um, stress and under time. So like, and we're speaking, uh, so right now, like, like scope carbine, like a mm. carbine type system. Now, if you're shooting like a bolt gun, then you can kind of dial that and figure it out. But, um, you know, depending on the type of shooting that you're wanting to do, um, a more complicated Christmas tree for like a bolt gun is fine, but it usually will have the numbers to reference that mm -hmm. and to complement that reticle. For a gas gun or a scope carbine, you know, you want to have, I like every two mils for those numbers and I like a good Christmas tree. Um, but also at the same time, like you were saying, I think a lot of reticles out there kind of were like, oh, well, this is a combat optic, so I'm going to make the stadia line super fat and super thick yep. for combat. And it's like, no, like, we, you know, as you get more experience as a rifleman, you want to have those thinner lines to be able to see more um, and make more precise aiming points. You can do more with 5.56 than, than than what the internet tells you that oh, you can yeah. do with it. And you can get a lot more accurate. Barrels, I've, I've said it a million times. Um, Barrel companies are are getting better. Yes. Okay. Uh, technology and barrels and and the way they manufacture barrels and the consistency in barrels. Um, there are a ton of great companies out there that back in the day guaranteeing a sub MOA or a one MOA barrel was very rare. Yeah. Okay. Now you have tons of companies that are guaranteeing you know sub sub MOA or at least one MOA type barrels. Um, so the rifles themselves and ammo it is available. Okay, to complement the shooter if the shooter is capable of doing that. Yeah, um, you can get very precise uh, if you've if you've been in a scope carbine class with us. You've seen it done before. If you watch this enough on YouTube now, obviously you guys are. You've seen it done. Um, you know, just this past week, I was running a brand new rifle from Blackout Defense. Impeccable, by the way. Uh, so absolutely far. unbelievable. Okay, I only got about 400 rounds through the rifle so far, but uh, you know, shooting 77 grain, you know. Um, at 800 yards out of a 13.9 13.9 yeah 13.9 rifle um at 800 yards you know did, honestly did not miss yeah 
It was, it was perfect. Okay. Yeah. Um, thousand yards, nine eight nine ninety eight, right? Mm -hmm. What is nine eighty? Something yeah. around there. Okay. Uh, nine hundred eighty yards, uh, first round hits. Yeah. Okay. Um, it now, literally when that happened, we both were like, "What? Yeah. That just happened." Yeah. Just a very consistent rifle yeah. so far. Okay. With consistent ammo, mm -hmm. um, and then you obviously have to have a consistent shooter. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you if you can if you can duplicate that, consistency is always the key, regardless of what shooting aspect that you're dealing in. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to be able to duplicate stuff, um, and I and I think, I think with with modern technology and all of these scopes as they continue to advance and magnified optics i really believe if you have a magnified optic now it should have some type of some type of ranging reticle in it like a mill reticle yeah is what i think um, yeah i think with with good amount of information yeah if i'm running a magnified optic i don't even own the only magnified optic that i currently own that has a bdc in it is the acog yeah um and because i just refuse to get rid of my acogs don't get rid of them. So I'm not ever going to get rid of yeah. them. They sit on rifles. Um, they're good handout rifles. Mm -hmm. Like here to hold this on, you know, this at this distance. That's a great so. point, actually. So like thinking in a prepping type of uh, scenario or being prepared, a prepared citizen, you know, if you have a family member or something like that, yeah. maybe handing them a BDC reticle gun is a good thing yeah. to have like, hey, just point that, you know, whatever. If it's 100 yards away, put it on one. If 200 yards away, put it on two. Exactly. It's just super simple. So that way it's not a lot of thinking and training required to be able to hand out to somebody, you know, a family member or whatever, just as a prepared citizen. Yeah, don't get rid of your BDC reticles. Yeah. Don't get rid of your ACOGs. Don't get rid of them because they work great. They're yeah. fantastic. There's a, there's a massive purpose for them. And we're not telling you uh, that, that BDC is not the way. I'll never tell you that because mm -hmm. I, I have BDC reticles. And like I said, I have ACOGs and, and I'll keep them. They're sitting on right. Rifles. If I have to hand them out to somebody, I got to hand them to a family member. I know at the end of the day that I can hand that rifle to my son and he can turn around and, and hold it on a target at 500 yards yeah. and, and put bullets close enough to make somebody move. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and that's what it's about. So right? you can use your Christmas tree so and use, take the mover. Correct. And I can, <laughs> then I can use my reticle. Yeah, It gives exactly. me more information yeah, yeah, yeah. and I can hit them as they're moving. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the other thing also that's cool is if you have a range finder and you're looking into a range yeah. finder or even if you're looking at like uh, binoculars or spotting scope, getting those in mills or a mill reticle or an MOA reticle, whatever complements your rifle, so your spotter can also yeah. give you let's, good measurements. Let's uh, this is a whole nother video, but let's let's just jump into this just real quick, okay? Yeah. Um, I get the question often here in the shop, or you guys messaging on Instagram, or yes, I am back on Instagram, so you, Yay. Can, you can hit me up on a message. <laughs> uh, I'm only on it during business hours. The link will be so, here. <laughs> the link will be here. So I'm only on it in business hours. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you shoot me a message, I'll answer it to the next day. That's the reason why. Yeah. Okay. I limit myself to about 30 minutes, roughly about a day. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, I get the question quite often is like, hey, what 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 do you guys use for distance for spotting? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Eric and myself, generally speaking, unless you're just coming to take a class with us and we have spotting glass up, if it's just me and Eric going out training, we use range finding binoculars. Yeah. And right now we're using the SIG Kilo 10. Yep. And the... Which were provided to us by uh, Big Techs. Big Techs Ordinance. Uh, Big yep. Techs Ordinance. We'll be doing a review on those. Mm -hmm. um, we have had in our collection a couple of SIG Kilo 6s Kilo for a while. Six, yeah. um, I'm going to highly recommend, I'm, I've never been the individual that tells you to go buy a piece of equipment, mm -hmm. okay? But if you have the money and you have the means of being able to do it, go buy a set of range-finding binoculars. A quality set. Quality set. Yeah. Whether that's Vortex or that's SIG. Yeah. Um, I've used both. I think both are absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need a range-finder, a spotting coat, scope, and a set of binoculars. Yeah. We're talking about, in the real world, if you needed to carry something... What are you probably going to carry? Right. What are you going to leave home with? Okay. Um, before in the past, I was carrying a set of binoculars and a rangefinder in my mm -hmm. kit. Well, now I'm only carrying a set of binoculars. I've ditched the rangefinder now because yeah. I have a rangefinder within it. So if you guys don't have it now and you have the means for it and it's within your budget, um, definitely take a look at um, picking up a set of uh, rangefinding binoculars because it is... It is a game changer. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's worth it. Uh, you get You got 10x. 10x will spot you plenty far enough mm -hmm. uh you can use 10x uh, I've, I've spotted with 10x before beyond 1200 yards yeah and if you're ever in the local area you can always stop by the shop and check them out yep. um or we can order some for you too so like if yeah, most uh if you guys ever want to look at look at them or Vortex just come to a class sig. too yeah yep. come and come and see us so. yeah um any final thoughts once again uh it does not matter what you choose 
Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, if you want to stick with your BDC reticle, stick with your BDC reticle because uh, because it works. Mm-hmm. If you're shooting MOA already and you're used to MOA and that's where you're at, and everybody else in your community is shooting MOA, stick with MOA. Yeah. If you are a lot of guys that you'll probably find most people shooting M, uh, MRAT, shooting mill. Okay? Yeah, right, yeah. uh, that's pretty much if you go shoot a match or something like that. I would say 99 percent of most everyone there yeah. is probably shooting. And mill. Rider mill. Yeah. Okay. So you're just going to, you're going to be a part of that and it's just going to be easier to communicate, um, back and forth. So I do believe that magnified optics should, if you're, if you're looking at purchasing, okay, I'm at the point in time in my journey of, Hey, I want to find something to complement myself. I, I think magnified optics, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think magnified optics should have some type of mill radical in it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they only complement the shooter. They really do. Yeah. Um, once you learn how to use them and, and that's nothing more than a training curve. Yeah. So you just got to get out and train. Yeah. So if you're looking at it, man, uh, personally magnified optics, I would say, you know, looking at buying something new, go out, pick up something with a mill, mill radical on it, get out and train. Um, consistency is key. You can't buy performance. Mm-hmm. You can buy things that complement your performance. Yeah. Also, you're not going to get any better by sitting on the internet and arguing about which one's better. Correct. Go out and train and figure it out on your own. And guess what? At the end of the day, you will know what works best for you. Um, so if you guys want to hear any updates about any new products or stuff we get in or some quick tips or just videos and fun pictures, go check out our Instagram channel. Also, uh, Roy's back on. Uh, so go check out his Instagram link as well as my Instagram and Tyler, our photographer and the other owner of Barrel and Hatchet. Also go check out our Twitter. I'm trying to be more active on Twitter. Uh, so that way it's, it's a lot more of a free space. So yeah. I'm going to be pushing more on, on Twitter a lot. And then also we have uh, Rumble, which you don't need a description for Rumble. Um, and all of our videos are here on Rumble. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then also we are doing a, I have the Discord chat that's still kind of up in the air. I'm trying to figure out how to work servers and all that crap. So um, as we said, uh, go check out our training schedule. Come train with us. It's a great way to support us. Also check out the website, pick up some merch, some gear. I believe Sharpie holsters are back in stock again. So grab yes. one of those. Sharpie holsters. Matt pouch, I think. Not going like, because we got a lot of back orders. Just kidding. Hey. Just kidding. Hey. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah. Maybe. There might be one or two that are left over. Yeah. You guys have been killing, killing it with bat yeah. pouches. Yeah. So, so um, anyways, thanks again for checking out this video. And go out and make sure you are the asset, not the liability. And we'll see you on the next one.